We're working on composite functions as part of your higher maths revision for your prelim or your uh, final exam. Uh, here we're going to cover question four. We've covered question one and three, one to three, in the previous video, um, and the video cut out. So we're, we're on to question four, and we'll do this one now. This one here is a, a decent challenge for you. Um, and uh, what I'd like you to do is freeze the video, try the question, and then follow the solution. Right. Uh, here we go. Let's let's see the solution to this one. So we've got two functions here, f of x and we've got h of x. Right, the question, first part, is given that g of x equals f of h of x, show that g of x can be written as this single fraction here. Right, let's go ahead and do that. Right, so g of x, first of all, is going to be equal to, so it's going to be f of h of x. So that's now a composite function. What I'm going to do there is I'm going to substitute the h of x function into that bracket there. So whatever I've got here, I'm going to put in there. So there's the f, there's the open bracket. Instead of h of x, put in the function. And there we go there. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to look at the f function. So the f of x function here, I've got 2x plus 1. So what I've got is I've got 2 times x plus 1, but instead of the x, what I'm putting in here, instead of the x going there, I'm putting this in. So it's 1 all over x minus 1. 1 all over x minus 1. And what I'm going to try and do now is to turn that into that there, a single fraction. Right, let's go ahead. Multiply this one out. 2 all over x minus 1 plus 1. I'm going to imagine that's got a 1 underneath there, 1 over 1. And then I'm just going to do a cross multiplication and multiply the denominators, or kiss and smile as you might know it as. Right then, let's start from here. Must start that way, that way. So that's going to be 2 times 1 is 2, plus, and I'll just consider that as a bracket, that would be x minus 1 there. And then I'm going to multiply the denominators. That times 1 there gives me x minus 1 on the bottom. I'm then going to tidy it up, so I can see up in the, the answer here, what I have to show it as, the x terms are first, so let's get the x terms first, so there's an x there, and then I've got 2, take away 1, which will give me plus 1 on the top, on the, the numerator, and on the denominator, I've got uh, x minus 1, so that's me done it, and that was just as required there, just as required. Right, part B, right, part B... Hence, after I've done this part here, I have to verify that the inverse function, or g to the minus 1x, inverse function is equal to g of x. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll try and work that out. So what we'll do is we'll start with g of x first of all, okay? Because I already know that. And the g of x function is this one up here, or the one that I just worked out in part a. Right, to, to try to find the inverse function, what I'm going to try and do is going to have a, a formula that uh, starts with x is equal to. So I'm going to change the subject of this formula to say x is equal to. So that's the, the idea that I'm going to go for now. Right, so first step I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get that away from the denominator. I'm going to take it up to this side here. So what I've got is I've got uh, g of x and then I'm going to multiply that by x minus 1, and that's going to be equal to x plus 1 along in that single line that's there. What I'll then do is I'll multiply that bracket out. So I've got, uh, let's go for g of x, and that's times x, and then it's g of x times minus 1, which would be minus g of x is equal to x plus 1. What I'll then do is I'll get all the, the x terms over to this side, okay? So what I have here is g of x with x. I'm going to bring that over to the left-hand side, that x, so that'll give me a minus x. It's positive on that side. This g of x here, I'm going to take over to the other side here, and it's going to be a positive. And that's going to be plus 1 that's sitting there already. Right, to, to try and get x on its own, what I'll do is I'll take a common factor of x out of these two terms here. So if I've got x here, I'll open a bracket, that'll give me g of x, and that'll be minus, and that'll just be a 1. That's there, because that times that will give me that, 
That times that gives me that there. So what I've done is just uh, factorised that part. And I've got that part on the right hand side at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get x on its own. I'm going to take that part and divide it over to the right hand side. Okay. So what I've got left is x is equal to, there's g of x plus 1 that's sitting there already. That's all going to be divided by this part here, g of x minus 1. Right, so I'm almost there. What I can now do is just change, I'm just going to change this for the inverse function, okay? Change it for the inverse. And all I mean there is that x is going to change to the inverse function. So wherever I see x, I'll change it to g to the minus 1x. That's the inverse function. And wherever I see g of x, I'm going to change that to x. There's another one there. I'll change that to x. And there's my function. And what I can see there is that the inverse function is the same as g of x. So therefore, g to the minus 1 x, that's the inverse function, is equal to the g of x function, okay, as required, okay, and that's that part complete. So a couple of good questions there, or, or from, from 1 to 4, um, on uh, functions, um, and uh, good luck with your, your exam in the prelims and the finals.